It's TK Friday, and today it's another full edit. I'm entitling this one Rugged Beauty. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. It's TK Friday, my favorite day of the week, and I hope it's yours, too. I'll be doing a full edit of this image sent in to us by Ilya Nazaranko, and I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, Ilya. I've entitled this image Rugged Beauty. Now, you could download the image as well as the PDF notes and give this edit a try out yourself. It's a great way of learning how to use the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. I'll have Dropbox links for you in the description below this video. You'll have to click on more to open up that description or you won't see it. And you'll find those links for the PDF notes as well as the image. And if you have an image you'd like me to edit on a TK Friday, scroll further down in the description. You'll find a contact me link. Click on that link and contact me and we can discuss using one of your images on a TK Friday. And by the way, if you don't yet own the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, you can save 15% off the TK9 plugin for Photoshop along with training videos. Use my promo code DK15. That gets you 15% off of everything. Not only are you saving money, but you're supporting the joy of editing with Dave Kelly when you use that promo code DK15. So thank you all for using my promo code. I really appreciate it. Let's go ahead and jump right in. I'm starting out, as always, in Lightroom. I'm using a linear profile for Ilya's camera. It's a Canon EOS R5. And I basically just click Auto and uh, make sure that my highlights and shadows are not clipping because we don't want to lose detail in the lightest lights or the darkest darks. And if I need to adjust my white and black point, I do, just so I remove the clipping. And that is it. And then under detail, I just, I'm using the basic sharpening from Lightroom here. A little bit of masking, a little bit of color noise reduction. That's it on this image. And as far as lens corrections, I always check on remove chromatic aberrations as well as enable profile corrections. I also want to mention I did not crop the image. And now it's ready to go into Photoshop. Basically, pretty flat and we'll do all the adjustments with Photoshop and the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. So now I would just right click and go to edit in and click edit in Photoshop 2024. But as always, I'm already there. And here we are in Photoshop. And by the way, I'm going to do something a little different today. Instead of using like zone masks and luminosity masks, I will be using uh, blend if exclusively today in this edit just to show you that it can be done. I'll be working off my TK9 combo panel and I'll have my TK9 CX panel opened up for actions. Now everything that's on the combo panel, you will find it on the CX panel. They're just found in different locations, that's all. They're set up differently. If you watch my TK Friday videos, you know I always like to start my edits out with what I like to call balance and contrast getting even balance and contrast over the entire image. Now on a landscape like this with the sky and foreground, I like to do the sky separately from the foreground. So the first thing I always start out with is save the sky and the foreground out as channels. And I like to call this setting ourselves up for success because we'll be using those channels later on and throughout the actual editing process of this image. Before I start, I'm noticing I have a background copy here. I don't know what I was doing here. I don't need this. I'm going to click on this layer and then click this trash can. Now, on the Combo or CX panel, you're going to find a trash can right here. There's two trash cans, by the way. This trash can, which will get rid of things on the layers. So I'm going to click that. That'll get rid of that background copy. And then we have this trash can. Now, here's a little tip for you. If you hold your Option or Alt key down, hover over any button, you can get information about the different buttons and what they do. And that goes for the panels as well. You can hover over the buttons on panels anywhere. You can get that information. And now I'm going to hover over the trash can here, and it tells me removes all alpha masks from the channels grid. I'm going to click X to close that note. And I opened up a note here, so you have to click X to close that as well. But you'll notice I do have an alpha channel right here. So say like when you're done with an edit, you have a bunch of different masks that you've saved as you were working through the edit. If you don't want to keep those in the final PSD file or TIFF file, you can go ahead and click this trash can and all those alpha masks will disappear. And so that's a nice little tip for you. 
Now we're on to step one of the edit. Now here's what we need to do. We want to save out the sky. So hold your command or control key down and click this button on either the combo or CX panel. Hold it down and click and it'll save the sky out as a channel as you can see right there. And then hold your command or control key down again and double click this button. And now it'll save that out as a foreground channel as you can see right there. And the next thing we want to do, and this is where it gets a little bit different, is we want to come up and click on this button here for Blend If. So we're going to click this. This button allows us to come and make Blend If masks. But I'm not going to make a Blend If mask. We'll just be using Blend If. And there's a little trick here, so pay attention to how I do this. For balance and contrast, I always like to get a Midtones 3 mask so if we click this button right here we can see we have a midtones three this is a blend if mask by the way but i'm going to use blend if on the layer with this blend if mask but it'll be actually blend if on the layer and not a mask and i'll show you how we have to do that here now i need a color grading tool so i need to output this to a color grading tool now normally if you click on the color grading tool you'll apply that mask to the color grading layer but if you hold your shift key down and click this now you will add a color grading tool which is blend if that midtones 3 blend if on the layer without a mask now we would get the same result with a mask or blend if so it's really either or you could do it either way if you want to save some file space i think working with the blend if is better if i wanted to use a mask i would have used the luminosity mask because i do like those a little bit better than blend if but blend if gives you really good results as you'll see in this video today. I mean, you're going to get very similar results, but if I'm going to work with masking, I really prefer working with luminosity masks or zone masks. Now, remember, I'll be doing the sky separately from the foreground. So I have one color grading layer. I need another one. So we're going to click this button right here to duplicate that layer. And now we need to come back and make this layer active because I'll start out with the foreground balance and contrast first. But now the next step is we need to get our layer mask calculator, which you'll find it right here in the combo panel. Hold your command or control key down and click on the layer mask calculator button, and that'll keep it open until you click this X to close it. And now what I want to do is click on foreground and apply it to this layer by clicking this button right here. And now you'll notice we have the foreground here, but we also have blend if set up for midtones three. Now, the reason I use Midtones 3, and I explain this every week, is because it protects the darkest darks and the lightest lights from getting clipping, meaning losing detail. And it's important that we don't lose detail, mainly in the highlights. Because when you print out a print, and if you don't have any ink going down on the light areas, it's not going to look very good. You'll see that there's missing ink there. You never want to clip the white point. But the black point, you can have a little bit of clipping there, and sometimes that looks nice because you'll definitely have ink going down on the paper. Now let's go ahead and balance and contrast the foreground. I'll start out with the shadows, so we'll click on the shadow button. And I just want to darken up the shadows a little bit over to, like, right there, minus 32. And now let's go to the midtone, so we'll click on the midtone button. And I just want to open up those midtones. Now when you start to drag this slider, nothing changes until you release the left click of your mouse and then you'll see a change. You see that? So I'm going to drag this over to right there, plus 43. And I also want to give it a slightly warm color grade. So I'm going to take, you see my cursor in the tip? I'm going to come right about here and give this one click. And I'm going to pull it back a little bit right there. And that just warms up those rocks just a little wee bit. Now let me shut this layer off. Here's the before and here's the after, and I like that. Now let's click the top color grading layer and make it active, and now we'll adjust the sky. Our layer mask calculator is still open, so now we can click on sky and click this button right here on the combo panel to apply that to that layer as a layer mask, as you can see right there. Now remember, blend if is still on here with a mids three blend if. Let's start out with the shadows. I'm going to click the shadow button, and I just want to darken up the shadows a bit to right there, minus 31. And now we're going to go to the midtones, and I just want to lighten up the midtones just a little wee bit to right there, plus 13. 
And now I just want to add a little bit of blue color grading. So I'm going to hover my cursor right about here and give that a click. See, that just adds a little bit of blue to that sky. I don't want to go too blue, but a little bit of blue is going to look nice. Let me shut this sky layer off. Here's the before and here is the after. And I like that. Now we don't need the mass calculator or the layer mass calculator right now. So we can click X to close it. So now I have my combo panel back. And now let's click the overall before after button. Here is before and here is after. And I think that's a nice balance and contrast for the overall image to start this whole editing journey. And now let's move on. Okay, now the next step is on this image, I think if I could bring up the mid-tone contrast just in the mid-tones of this image, that could really be nice. Now, for now, I'm going to X out of the color grading tool by clicking this button, and nothing will change in our color grading layers. And now, remember, I'm using all blend if on this uh, video today. Now, to get that contrast adjustment in mid-tones, I'm going to use a curves adjustment layer. So we're going to click on this button on the multi mess panel. That gives us a curves adjustment layer. And now we're going to click this button on the multi mass panel to give us edit blend if. And I like to use like, we have three different midtones choices. We have midtones one, two, and three. I'll use the least aggressive of the midtones, which is midtones one. So I'll click on midtones one. And now on this adjustment layer, you can tell by this symbol that we have the blend if setting for midtones one on here which corresponds to what you see up here on the multi mess panel, midtones one. And now I'm just going to use a basic S curve. I'm going to lift up on my highlights a little bit like this, and I'm going to take the shadows and pull down the shadows till I get a nice little contrast adjustment here. So check it out. Let me shut this layer off. Here is before and here's after, but now we have some really nice contrast only in the midtones. Now I feel it's a little too strong in the sky, so we could take care of that. Remember, we have a sky mask, so we can click our layer mask calculator button, give that a click. We can click foreground and click the apply, and that'll apply it to the foreground only. Now I can still add a little bit of that adjustment in the sky, and here's a little tip for you. In the properties panel, click on the layer mask icon, and what I want to do is take this density and pull it back. And I'm going to drag it to the left to like 62%. And you see it's a little on the gray side there. So it's, a le it's letting a little bit of that adjustment through. So let me shut this off. Here is before the midtone contrast and here is after. It's not quite as much in the sky now, but it's mainly on the foreground. And now we don't need blend if right now, so we, we can just click this X. But edit blend if stays on this layer. Now, after this adjustment, I feel like I need to overall lighten the midtones a little wee bit. So to do that, we'll grab another curves adjustment layer, and I'm only using it for a blend mode. So we're going to click this button here. We'll add a curves adjustment layer. Now we can click the edit blend if button. Again, I'm going to use midtones one. So click on midtones one. And we don't see any change here, but watch. I'm going to click on this screen button here to change to a screen blend mode. And now we're only lightening the midtones, but that's way too strong. What I like to do is take this opacity, just hover over to the left here, right above opacity, and we can drag this the whole way off to the left. And then just slowly build this up and stop where you think it looks good. And I stop mine right here at 59%. So let me shut this off. Now remember, this is only going to midtones, midtones one. Here's before and here's after just lightens up the midtones, and I like everything so far. Some of these light areas on these rocks are bothering me, and I'd like to pull those down just a little wee bit. Now, right now, my edit blend diff is in the way, so we're going to click the X so we can get back to the multi mass panel, because what I'm going to do is click this button right here for edit blend diff to generate a mask. We can use this button right here, and it kind of works the same as a zone mask if you use this picker button. So what I want to do is click on this button and then we want to select a tone, like a light tone in here, like right around, oh, well, let's say like right around here. See that light tone and we'll click OK. And see how that isolates that. And now I want to output this to a brightness contrast adjustment layer. Now, if I click it right now, 
I'll just apply that mask to the layer. But if I hold the shift key down, remember that little trick, hold the shift key down and click this button. And now we add a brightness and contrast adjustment layer without a mask, but we are using blend if to protect us. But now I only want to apply this to the foreground. So we could come to our combo panel or CX panel, whichever you're using, click on the layer mask calculator. I only want to work in the foreground, so we'll click on foreground, and I'll apply this to the foreground only, as you can see right there. And now, I want to take the brightness, which is targeting just that area right there, right? Take it back to somewhere right there, minus 31, and let's give it a little bit of contrast. So I'm going to take this to the right, to like right there. Now, let me shut this layer off. Here is the before. And here is the after, but you see how it just tones that down, and I like that. Now, here's something we can do. If we want to see how this blend if is affecting this foreground, if you click this double arrow magenta button, you can see how it's just targeting those light areas. You see that? So that's pretty cool. And by the way, if you hold your command or control key down, you can click right here in this button, and you can change that to any color you want. I have mine for magenta because there's never much magenta in any image. So it's magenta is a nice color to use, but you could use any color you want. I'm just going to click cancel. Just thought you might like to know that. And now we can shut that off by clicking the same button again. And now it's off. But that's how we can tell how we're being targeted on these different layers when we're using Edit Blend If by clicking that double arrow button. The next thing I want to do is increase the dark contrast in this image. I want to look for really dark darks. And again, I'll use Blend If. So I'm going to click this button to go and generate an Edit Blend If mask on the multi-mask panel. And just like in Luminosity Mask, we have lights 1 through 6, darks one through six and midtones one through three. So I want to isolate really dark darks. So let's start with darks one. Let me click on darks one. There's darks one. Here's darks two. I'm looking for those really dark darks. Here's three. Here's four. And here's darks five. And I think darks five is right where I want to be. And now I want to output this to a curves adjustment layer because I'll use a multiply blend mode to target these areas. And remember my little trick here is if I don't want to generate a mask, I hold my shift key down and click on this curves adjustment layer button. And now we have a curves adjustment layer with that darks five blend if on the layer. And now all I need to do here is change the blend mode from normal to multiply. And I'll do that. I'll click this button right here on the combo panel. And as you can see, we've darkened all those dark areas. Now that's too strong. So I'm going to take this opacity the whole way off and just build it up slowly. And I'll stop where I think I like it. And I think right there at plus 70. So let me shut this layer off. Here's the before and here is the after. And I really like that contrast. I think that's really helping. And then don't forget, you can always click this double arrow button here, this magenta button, just to see where that edit blend if is applying the adjustment to. However, I am at 70% here, so it's not at full strength. But there you can see the areas that are being targeted in magenta. So we'll click this button again, and we'll go back to the image. And one more time, I'll shut this layer off by clicking this eyeball. There it is without the extra contrast, and here it is with in the dark tones, and I think that looks really good. I'm really loving everything so far. Let me click the before after button on my combo panel. Here's where we started, and now we're here, and I really love the direction. Let's try an action. How about some soft pop? I always like to try that on my images, so let's click on soft pop and see what we get. Now, I do like it. Now, I don't like it in the sky. Let me shut it off. Here's the before and here's the after. I do like it in the foreground. So we could come and click on our layer mask calculator button and click on foreground and apply that to the foreground by clicking this button right here. And now let me shut it off. So here it is without soft pop and here it is with soft pop, but only in the foreground. Now here's something you can also do. And I always experiment with this whenever I'm using soft pop or different actions. And what we could do is click on the Edit Blend If button and say, what does this look like only on the highlights? So let's try Lights 1. So we'll click on this button for Lights 1. 
That's what it looks like on lights one. How about mids three? So let me click on mids three. That's what it looks like in mids three. It's a little more tamed down. And let's try it on darks one. Here's darks one. Now I did kind of like it on darks one. Here's before and here's after. But at the end of the day, I decided, now if you shut this check off, you'll shut off the blend if. I decided I'm going to leave it up at full strength, covering all the different luminosity zones, right like that. And now we can X out of edit blend if. But it's always good to experiment with different luminosity values just to see how things interact. Now, when I study the image, I feel like this rock here on the right side is a little bit too light. I like to bring it more into balance with the one on the left. So what I'll do is grab the object selection tool. I'm in the lasso mode and all I'll do is lasso right around this rock like so and see what we get here. And yes, we get a nice selection. And all I'm going to do here is we have this selection and you can tell by the selection indicator. What I want to do is apply this to a curves adjustment layer. So I'll click this button on the multi mass panel. There it is right there. Now I want to change the blend mode to multiply, but what I'm going to do is take this opacity and drag it the whole way to the left. And now I'll click on this multiply button on my combo panel. That'll change it to the multiply blend mode. Now we don't see anything because I took the opacity the whole way off. And all I want to do now is hover right over opacity and start to drag this to the right. And as I do, see how I'm starting to darken that down? And I'm going to take it to like right here, 34, like 34%. And now let me shut this off. Here is the before and here's the after. So it's a little more in line. And that may be too dark. Let me just pull it back a little bit to maybe... I don't know, like 31. I think that looks really good right there. I'm happy with that. The next thing I want to do is close off the top of this image. I'm going to close off this sky. So to do that, we're going to grab a curves adjustment layer. So on your multi mass panel, we can click this button right here. That gives us a curves adjustment layer. We're going to put a black mask to hide the adjustment. Click this button on the combo panel. That gives you a black hide all mask. We're going to change the blend mode to darken and multiply is the way to go here. So click your multiply button and you can see your multiply blend mode on that layer right there. Then we need a gradient tool. So click on your gradient tool. Make sure you're using the new gradient, not the classic gradient. So make sure you have gradient checked on. Make sure you have this first button clicked on for linear gradient. And right here, this is a drop down. If you click here under basics, click on basics. Make sure you have the last one clicked on. You want to make sure it's in the reverse mode so you have white on the left and black on the right. And now we can draw a gradient. And what I'll do is just right outside of the canvas here, I'll click and I'll start to drag down. And I want to drag down to right around here. I'm going to hold my shift key down to constrain this so it stays nice and straight to right about here. And now I'll release the left click of my mouse. And now we can adjust this diamond. I like to say this is like adjusting a window blind. You see that we can adjust this up or down. And I think to maybe somewhere right about here looks actually pretty good. Now, if we don't want to see this line here, we could click right here on the curves adjustment layer. We can see here's the before and here's the after. But you'll notice it's getting onto my rock here, which looks unnatural. So what we can do to take care of that is get a layer mask calculator. So we'll click this button right here. And what we can do is click on foreground and subtract the foreground out of that by clicking the minus button. And now let's click on the curves adjustment layer icon again so we don't see the line. And now let's check it out. I'll shut this layer off by clicking this eye. Here's the before and here's the after. So I like it. Next, I do want to add a basic vignette to the overall image. And to do that, if you don't have your TK actions open, click the TK button on either the combo or CX panel. Mine are open, so I'm just going to click on this first button in actions for vignette. That's just a basic vignette. And the Gaussian blur dialog comes up. And the radius, I always accept it just for what it gives me. I find it to always be just right. And I click OK for that. Now it defaults at like 30% opacity. 
If it's too strong, you can pull it back, or if you need more, you can drag the opacity to the right. And what I like to also do is protect my darkest shadows from getting too dark. And to do that, we could come to the Edit Blend If button on the multi mask panel, give it a click, and click this button right here for No Darks 1. And it will keep it out of the darkest darks on the image. And now let's check it out. Here is my before. I'm just shutting the layer off. Here's before the vignette and here's after. But I really like it. I think it really just brings this image all together. A couple more things and we'll be done. I think the foreground saturation is a little bit oversaturated. So I want to decrease some of that saturation. Right now, I need to get to the multi mask panel and Blend If is in the way. So just click the X that gets Blend If out of the way. Nothing changes for the Blend If on any of the layers. And let's click this button right here for a saturation vibrance mask. Now, all I want to do is use saturation one. That's showing me the strongest saturated colors. Those will be the lighter areas here. Those will be the stronger saturated colors. I'll put this to a hue saturation adjustment layer. And then on master, I just want to decrease the overall saturations. We'll start to drag this to the left. You see that? We're just decreasing the saturation. And it's only targeting the oversaturated color. See, even if I take it the whole way off, we don't lose all our saturation. So I want to take this over to like, like a minus 42%. Now let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after. But see, it just tones those oversaturated colors down just a little wee bit. Now, if I were to shut off this layer mask, which is only targeting those oversaturated colors, look at the difference in the adjustment. So let me click this X and you can see that's what it would look like without the mask. And here's what it looks like with the mask, only targeting those oversaturated colors. So that's pretty nice. The last thing I want to do is just lighten up the midtones in the foreground a little bit. And to do that, we're going to click on the Blend If Mask Generation button right here. So we'll click this. And I always like to use Midtones 1. So we'll click on the Midtones 1 button. And now I want to output this to a Curves Adjustment Layer. So hold your Shift key down and click on this button right here. And that'll output a curves adjustment layer and now we have edit blend if targeting midtones one and now i'm going to take the opacity and take it the whole way off so i'm just dragging it off i'm just hovering over opacity and you see the little hand comes up there and i just drag it the whole way to the left and now we're going to change the blend mode to screen so let's click on screen that will lighten and what i'll do is i'm going to type my one key that gives me 10 percent I'll type my two key, that gives me 20%. I'll type my three key for 30%. Type my four key, you guessed it, 40%. And my five key for 50%. I think I like 50%, but I don't like it in the sky. So what can we do to get it out of the sky? If you're thinking that layer mask calculator, Dave, you are right. So let's click our layer mask calculator button right here on my combo panel. We can either subtract the sky, we could click sky and subtract it, or click foreground and apply it. Either way works. So let's click on foreground and click the apply button. And now you'll notice it's only in the foreground. So let's check it out. Here is the before. Let me shut this eye off by clicking it. Here's before and here's after. But it just lightens up that foreground a little bit. And there we go. And now let's look at our overall before and after. So let's come to the combo panel. Click this button right here. We can see we started here, and now we end up here. I'm going to click this button again, and there you go. That is the full edit, and I hope you give this one a try. Don't forget you can download the image as well as the PDF notes. Links are in the description below the video. Well, there you go, everyone. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon, and also click all so you'll receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Cully, and I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.